Hey YouTube, it's Weird Paul. When movies were released, the scripts were often adapted into a novelization. These were especially popular in the days before home video because it was the only way to experience the movie again outside of the theater. Let's start out today with some 60s paperbacks. I've got two Beatles books, A Hard Day's Night and Help. Help was billed as the craziest movie ever made. Both books have eight pages of pictures in a section in the middle. I also have The Art of Love, a sensational motion picture from 1965 starring James Gardner. And the novelizations of the Spaghetti Westerns for a few dollars more and The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. The same author also wrote A Coffin Full of Dollars. It wasn't based on any movie, but it does have the cigarette ads that you'd often see in the middle of 60s paperbacks. There were some books that already existed before they were made into films, but they were republished when the movie came out. These would be called movie tie-ins. The oldest of these that I have is this 1928 edition of Seven Footprints to Satan, a silent movie that was considered lost until a print was found in the 1990s in Italy. It contains many cool photographs from the movie. I also have Flowers for Algernon, which was filmed as Charlie in 1968, Return from the Ashes from 1965, I Am Legend, filmed as the Omega Man with Charlton Heston in 1971, and Louis L'Amour's Shalako, made with Sean Connery in 1965. Let's move on to the 70s. The book The Planet of the Apes was written by Pierre Boulle in 1963. But when the ape sequels were made, they were all novelizations. The second movie, Beneath, the third movie, Escape, which is a photo of the actual characters, and the fifth movie, Battle. I have the Molly Maguires, a 1970 drama about Pennsylvania coal miners. The former owner left this frozen yogurt coupon bookmark in it. From 1976, the Oscar-nominated Network, and the horror film The Omen. It says it has eight pages of film scenes, but my book is a misprint with 16 pages. They're all doubles. The 1976 horror movie Squirm, even the dialogue about the egg cream is included. The Trial of Billy Jack, which was actually self-published by the director and star Tom Laughlin, and the classic sci-fi movie Alien. I have a few other types of paperbacks, too. This Easy Rider book is the entire script and includes some great color photos. I also have some photo novels, which show the movie scene by scene with dialogue or descriptions. I have The Champ and Hair and Steve Martin in The Jerk. Another type of book was the making of paperbacks. These books about Jaws are full of photos and all the details about the production. This book about earthquakes seems to have it all. It's a novelization, the making of, and it's got photos and I have the making of Return of the Jedi. Which brings us back to novelizations. Here's all three Star Wars books. Empire Strikes Back doesn't have any photos, but the other two books do. From the 80s, I have this Superman Miracle Monday book. It's not a novelization of Superman 2 at all, but it does have some photos from the movie. Coming hot on the heels of Conan the Barbarian, The Sword and the Sorcerer was the most profitable independent film of 1982. I also have Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, a movie whose PG rating outraged parents and led to the creation of PG-13. They would have felt safer if their kids had read these novelizations from the juvenile publisher Scholastic. We have The Karate Kid from 1984 and License to Drive from 1988. But my favorite novelization that I had read many times was The Cannonball Run. One specific date that I remember looking at this book was April 21st, 1996. Why do I remember that date? Well, that evening, I'd been looking through the book, and as I thumbed through it, I remembered that Jimmy the Greek Snyder, who is a famous bookie and sports commentator, had appeared in the movie as himself. I remember thinking, someday when Jimmy the Greek Snyder dies, I'll remember that he was an actor, too. The next morning, I got up, turned on the radio, and heard the news. Jimmy the Greek Snyder had passed away the night before at the age of 77. I hope that you enjoyed seeing the movie novelizations today. If you did, don't forget to click the like button down below. I'll see you soon with more memories. Thanks, YouTube.